Expedia is launching a new feature that uses chat GPT technology to help people plan trips. So the collaboration between OpenAI and the popular travel site is currently in beta testing. Joining us now for more on this is Expedia Group CEO and Vice Chairman Peter Kern. Hi, Peter. Thanks for making time. Thanks for having me. Great to see you both. So let's start with talking about exactly how this will work. Sure. Well, basically, the idea is just to give travelers, however they want to shop, the best ways to plan, the best ways to shop, the best ways to find the right thing for them. So with ChatGPT, we're able to let people shop with natural language. So the same way you've probably been talking about ChatGPT, you can ask it whether you know, April's a good time to go to Paris or what you might see in Tokyo if you go in March and can you see the cherry blossoms? And then you can keep going with that and ultimately find things you're looking for, a hotel near the best place to see the cherry blossoms. And we can save those hotels for you. And then you can go compare and shop and figure out what's right for you. So it's just an easier way to shop, really. So let's talk about the investment that Expedia has made in chat GPT technology and where you perhaps think the future of travel is headed. Um, was it a hard sell uh, to the people who make decisions at Expedia, the board, to say, look, we want to take, uh, we want to spend, essentially is what you have to do, resources to bring this technology to Expedia? Yeah, I think the way to think about it is we're constantly spending on improving the experience for shoppers, whether it's service, how they plan, how they shop how they get smarter outcomes. You know, we have tons of features. We have price tracking, we have collaborative shopping. We're building these things all the time. And, and many of them are powered by AI. And ChatGPT is AI in a specific space, which is natural language. But it's really just another way to make it easy for travelers to shop, which is what we spend all our time doing. So it's not a decision to redeploy assets to spend on doing this. It's really a decision to make it easier for travelers, which again is what all our engineers and designers and product people do every day. And speaking of the experience for customers, uh, you know, there have been a lot of glitches with this chat GPT technology in other spaces. Uh, sometimes it's inconsistent, sometimes it's just incorrect. So how are you expecting to deal with, you know, some challenges like that throughout the process? Yeah, so we built our own AI to basically monitor the outcomes for what ChatGPT comes back with, because really we only want to help people shop for travel. We're not trying to talk to them about politics or religion or anything else. So we're not, this isn't to just go have a ChatGPT conversation. This is about having <laughs> travel come. So, so we are really using our own capabilities to monitor the outcomes, make sure travelers don't get strange responses. And if something goes wrong, we're trying to make sure it comes back to travel or, you know, we respond appropriately to the travel. Right. So you're not uh, expecting that people are going to ask for relationship advice to the, <laughs> <laughs> the way sometimes people do. Oh, <laughs> unless it's for a honeymoon. Yeah, or, exactly. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Peter, let me ask you, let me get your thoughts on consumer demand heading into the spring and summer travel seasons. Uh, <laughs> I, I've noticed that I'm planning a trip to South Africa, a trip that we had planned before the pandemic uh, to take my entire family awesome. on safari. But, you know, we had originally planned, we, well, the, the, the offer is still there, to, you know, pay for my family members. But now I'm looking at the bills that are coming in and they are 30 to 40 percent more expensive than we had budgeted three years ago. Um, so have we reached pre-pandemic levels? And is, are, is the rise in prices that we've seen for flights, for hotels, for any kind of travel, you know, here to stay, the 30% bump that we've seen. Yeah, there's been a lot of inflation since pre-pandemic for sure. And so far it seems to be holding up. Now we're not seeing the same growth we saw during, you know, 20, 21, 22, prices were still growing. Things have leveled off. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is demand is very high. So I don't think that you're gonna see those prices drop materially, uh, but there's still lots of ways to find good deals, lots of ways to find opportunities. Uh, to save, you know, with us, there's opportunities to package and save. There's opportunities for member discounts. So there's lots of tools that I think consumers can use to find the right thing for them at a, at a good price. But for sure, prices are higher and still demand for air is high and there aren't as many planes in the air. There aren't as many international flights still to certain regions. You know, Asia's coming back strongly and there aren't as many flights to Asia from the U.S. So um, so there's still going to be constrained uh, supply and a lot of demand. And I think that's going to keep prices pretty robust. So, you know, you shouldn't expect any big declines anytime soon. Go on your trip. 
Sorry about that. I know. <laughs> uh, Peter, you know, another thing I'm that sorry. happened during the pandemic, obviously, was uh, not a lot of international travel for Americans. So are we starting to see that pick back up now? Yeah, actually, for Americans, the levels have really returned to a nearly pre-pandemic mix in terms of international and domestic. Uh, we're seeing a lot of demand for international uh, this spring and summer. I mentioned Tokyo, you know, uh, this is the first year, this is the first time since COVID that uh, people can go see uh, the cherry blossoms. So there's a lot of demand for a lot of these destinations and big cities, international big cities are back in a big way. So the mix from rural or, you know, mountains and lakes and beaches to cities is also back. So you're going to see a very similar mix, I think, this summer to what you would have seen, you know, summer of 2019 in terms of where people go and what they go see. And there's a lot of demand. People missed a lot of the exciting events that were missed during COVID. Pride uh, was a big event in Australia, and it was hugely, you know, attended at a big interest area for for travelers. So we're seeing that too as these big events come back. Exciting stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Peter, congratulations. This is really cool. Appreciate it. Thank. You. Appreciate it. Have a great trip to South Africa. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Peter.